Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video I wanted to take a look at this somewhat unusual indie game called Signal Simulator. This game is available on Steam and it was actually gifted to me by one of you wonderful people, uh, a person whose nickname is BI204-1. Uh, I actually wanted to try this and wanted to play through and show you what it, what it actually has because this is one of the most unusual games I've played in a long time and also one of the most interesting and most intriguing ones. But it's not for everyone. Anyway, welcome to What the Math. Let's take a look at Signal Simulator. All right, the truth is that it's actually, uh, okay, it's not really a game. It's literally SETI simulation. SETI, if you, if you haven't heard of this term before, is Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, which is basically a program um, or slash, I guess, community of people trying to find um, intelligent life outside of Earth. And it's often uh, something that you can actually uh, help with by installing a type of a software on your computer that allows us to process signals received from space. And SETI program has been going on for a really long time and it has several locations around the world where they have these telescopes pointing at different locations, listening to signals and trying to identify uh, if possibly by some chance the signal received was from extraterrestrial intelligence. In this particular game called Signal Simulator, you play as a researcher where you kind of have uh, an ability to walk around and explore different telescopes and look at various tools here and there. But really your job is, for the most part, to sit in a chair in this building and to look for signals that uh, are sent to your computer. It's literally just that. So here, you're gonna have to come to this computer in the middle that for some reason has a bunch of boxes next to it. You're gonna have to sit down in your chair and drink some coffee, which unfortunately I wish you could do, but you can't. Um, and basically look at signals that you are going to start receiving on the screen right here. As soon as uh, the time in the game changes, so we're going to actually uh, wait until the signals start being sent to us. And then we're going to try to find something. Every time you find a signal and every time you identify a signal, you can start analyzing it uh, using, I believe this screen right here. Oh, and by the way, signals just started coming in. That's the sound you hear in the background. Um, and if you actually identify a signal correctly, you'll also get uh, some science that you can use to upgrade your antenna. So there's a bit of a RPG elements to this game as well. Now, for the most part, that's kind of it. That's really all there is to this game, except of course you can also move your, um, your uh, antenna your parabolic antenna slash telescopes. Uh, and so how does it work exactly? Well, first of all, we actually need to take a look at the uh, azimuth and elevation of the signals that are coming in and try to estimate where the signal might be located based on the average values, minimum, maximum values, and so on. So here it's about 240 by 36. So we're going to set the parameters right here uh, to 240, uh, wait, no using this button 240 and what is it again 33 240 243 and 33 okay well, let's just go there 243 and 33 now i'm just gonna press this button and it's gonna take a really long time for these uh large parabolic antenna to actually position themselves. As a matter of fact, this is probably the, the most annoying part of the game because it takes a really long time, but you can actually see them move if you take a close look. They're being repositioned right now. And what we're going to try to achieve here is basically position them so that they're pointing at the location where the signal might be coming from. And then we'll have to kind of adjust it a little bit until we get the signal. And then once you get the signal, you'll be able to identify what type of a signal it is. Now, so far, I've only been able to find one, and it's actually kind of difficult to find them. Um, but that signal was coming from a neutron star, and you actually get to hear what neutron stars, or slash pulsars, that is, really sound like. You actually get to uh, identify real, uh, realistic signals here, including things like black holes, um, various exoplanets, and whatever else might be sending signals that are receivable from planet Earth. 
So in that sense, this is probably one of the most realistic simulations um, of what it's like to be a SETI scientist, or really basically an astronomer in general. And um, it's definitely something that is worth trying. But unfortunately, because this game is too realistic, we're going to 243. This is like super slow. I'm going to actually skip this part and show you what it's like when you actually start looking for the signal itself. All right, so we finally found an approximate location of where the signal is coming from. And this actually took me something like 25 minutes, to be honest. And I missed a few of the signals. Still haven't found the actual exact location, but we're going to try to uh, estimate where it's coming from. And this is actually probably the more kind of a difficult slash annoying part because it's sometimes very very difficult to pinpoint where exactly the signal is so it says 304 or 304 32 and i'm gonna go pace uh degree at a time to try to pinpoint where exactly the signal is so this might take me a few minutes uh, as a matter of fact this is probably the part where it kind of gets a little bit stressful because you don't always get uh, the signal you sometimes miss it and um, this is the part where you kind of have to just search areas and locations around uh, the night sky and unfortunately I missed the signal yet again uh, I kind of searched quite a lot of different frequencies this probably took me about five minutes of searching didn't find it now this was my fifth signal since I started making this video I'm going to try this again, try to find another one of these uh, unusual signals. But honestly, this is basically most of the gameplay. You're going to be looking for these signals continuously. You're going to try to find them by moving your antenna just a few degrees at a time. And uh, you're essentially scanning the night skies, trying to find where exactly the uh, potential signal might be coming from. It is a little bit um, time consuming. It's definitely something that requires a lot of patience and it's definitely not for everyone but i'm going to give it another go just because i want to show you what the actual signals look like once you find them all right so let's try this again this is my seventh attempt i've been recording this for about an hour now trying to find a signal that i can showcase to you uh it is a little bit uh patient inducing or basically you kind of need to be extremely patient and have to enjoy uh, hearing these clicking noises, although you can actually disable them by clicking this button. But I kinda, I kinda like it. It does help me focus a little bit more. Uh, but all right, so 313.54, maybe a little bit lower. So let's, let's try to see if we might get lucky this time. Although I think this needs to be a little bit higher. Let's go to 52. Um, 53 maybe? Yeah. And let's see if we can hear something there. Normally, once you get the signal, you'll actually hear a slightly different noise. Um, and a lot of it is actually kind of realistic. It, it does actually sound like, for example, Pulsar that I found last time. That you would expect from a, real, a realistic signal that you find in space. Okay, it's down to 51 again. Uh, and here it's up to 319. And the way that this works is it actually kind of sends you random data around the point where the signal is located. And so the averages here are not always accurate. As a matter of fact, most of the time they're not. And as you find more signals, you can actually upgrade your antenna to be a little bit more accurate by, I think, uh... oh, there we go. We've detected something. Awesome. And this would be what? A fast radio burst. Awesome. This is great. Um, FRBs are actually extremely unusual rare events. Oh wow, this is from a brown dwarf too. Pretty cool. So um, FRBs are not really explained just yet. We don't really know what exactly they are. And as you can hear, it's a pretty awesome uh, fighting once you actually do discover these. Because it took me an hour, I'm actually super excited right now. Even though you've probably... Uh, are not feeling the same excitement as I do. But uh, this is actually what makes this game so brilliant. You never know what you're going to find, and what you discover is actually pretty awesome. I believe I actually am supposed to be getting signs for this as well, uh, but it does take a while to download this data. As you can see right here, it's actually downloading this, receiving the raw data, and um, eventually, I think it's supposed to give me some sort of a data analysis. Although I don't actually know if I'll have enough time 
uh, to receive all of this. Now, I've discovered this at 54 uh, elevation, 320 azimuth, which is just a little bit off from what the average is showing me. But basically now we just wait and kind of listen to these unusual sounds of the brown dwarf that seems to be producing a fast radio burst. Um, this is just kind of what this game is all about. You find these signals, analyze them, and keep searching for more. And every time you find one, it's actually going to be different. And honestly, from an outside observer perspective, it doesn't sound like a very exciting game. As a matter of fact, it's really not a very exciting game. I wouldn't even call this a game. It's literally a SETI simulation. But it's actually kind of cool. I'm actually honestly enjoying the process of looking for these signals. I've been playing this uh, maybe one or two hours a day just to see if I can find something new. And most of the time I fail. But when I do find something, it's actually kind of exciting. All right, so that's kind of it for Signal Simulator. It's still kind of in early access. There's more features that will be added. And as you can see, there's actually a bug right now where my mouse is slowly moving to the lower left corner for some reason. I can't really figure out why. Um, but other than that, this is pretty much it for this game. Let's actually get off our table and just walk around the room and see what else we can discover here. And one of the main points of this game is to actually discover some of the secret signals that you can discover here. And uh, I believe some of them are from alien sources. At least that's what I've read in some of the reviews of the game. Now, I don't want to spoil anything. And actually, I mean, I don't really know anything myself about what kind of signals you can discover other than the ones I found. But they are so far different every single time, which makes it very interesting. If you are interested in astronomy, if you're definitely interested in things like SETI or would like to learn more about things that we detect from space and how we do it, this is actually a pretty cool simulator. I, and once again, I wouldn't really call it a game because you can't really fail here. Well, I guess you can in some sense if you don't find a signal, but there is no loss condition. And also you can't really win this, but you can, however, progress by collecting science and by basically um, getting more and more uh, upgrades for your antenna. Now, oh wow, this is actually really expensive. In the last update, this was only three credits, but I think now it seems that I'm required to pay a lot more. So let's actually just wait for the signal to finish and see how much science we get out of it. And if we're lucky, we might be able to download some cool data from this uh, brown dwarf. And honestly, just hearing this is both eerie and exciting. I, uh, for one, I'm actually kind of wondering what's creating this really unusual whoosh sound once in a while that you're about to hear. Any second. That one. Now, that's actually a fast radio burst, and I really wonder what's making this. Now, science obviously still hasn't really discovered the real source for these FRBs. Um, and the fact that it's coming from this brown dwarf is even more interesting. But, yeah, so there's more questions than answers that this game provides. Raw data not full. Data cannot be decoded. Hmm, so I didn't really get enough time to download all of this. And I think, uh, yeah, I only got three credits from this. That's not enough. Well, anyway, so that's really all there is to Signal Simulator. Do check it out. It's definitely not for everyone. As a matter of fact, I think it's mostly for almost no one. I, I don't really know many people that would enjoy this type of gameplay, but I honestly really like this. And it, it is kind of relaxing because all you do is kind of search for signals and once in a while get rewarded with this unusual sound. Other than that, this is Signal Simulator. Check it out in the description below and space out. See you tomorrow.
Bye bye. And I think I've spent enough time here, so I'm just gonna go and exit the building and basically head home. I wonder if there's actually. Oh wow! Wow! Look at this beautiful environment. It's interesting how they actually created all of this, even though for the purposes of the game, this is not really needed. So maybe there's going to be something else added to the game later on where you might even have aliens coming and trying to kidnap you. But obviously this is just a speculation. Anyway, that's that's it. Bye bye.